DIY stenciling is easy, fun, and maybe even a little magical. Today I'm going to show you how to turn this plain board into a charming vintage Christmas sign. You'll be able to use our stencils to express your holiday style without breaking the bank. To kick off this project, I went ahead and based my board. Um, I chose red because I think that's a really classic Christmas color. You could really do anything with this stencil and it would look great. You could use a green or a cream or a black and anything would just show up really nice. Um, it's, it's just a really good stencil to use with lots of different colors. So now you're going to go ahead and take your stencil. Um, and the board that I've chosen today is a little bit larger than the stencil that I have here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my T-square. Um, I'm going to eyeball it first to make sure I kind of think I know where I want it. Then I'm going to measure and yeah, so I'm just going to move it just a little bit here. And if you're worried about it being, you know, centered on all four sides, you could use your pencil here to mark it off. That way you know where you want it on the edges as well. And once you've got that done, you're just going to tape it down. And so taping shouldn't take you very long, just two quick pieces and then you're ready to go. I think I like the classic look, so I'm just gonna paint everything cream today. Again, I'm gonna grab one of these dome brushes. The dome brush is really great for stenciling and make sure not to push any paint that you don't want underneath your stencil, and it doesn't hold onto paint too tightly. So I'm gonna just pick up just a little bit on my dome brush here, and that little bit is still way too much. So I'm gonna be sure I roll it off, and I'm swirling my brush on my paper towel just till I get a nice dusty look and then you're ready to go. So we're just gonna be sure that we're using the swirl technique. Um, that's my favorite way. If you prefer something like the stippling, um, that's up to you, but I just think the swirling creates a nice even look across your board. Now I've used just about all the paint on this brush here, on this load, so what I'm gonna do is just pick up some more. Remember that the most important part of stenciling is having a dry brush on your board. So this wiping off step is one of the key points you need to be sure you're hitting. And then here comes the easy part. You just take your brush to your board and swirl really easy. So I just noticed that over here on this side, I've went off my stencil. If that happens to you, all you need to do is take a paper towel and a little bit of water, and then you can just wipe it off really easy. Um, or if you want to prevent that from happening altogether, if you're worried about that happening to you before you even start your project, what you can do is just tape along the whole edge, and that will prevent that from happening at all. Usually I'm much more careful. So I'm going to go ahead and tape up on this corner because that is kind of a close call there and I just I don't want to spend all my time wiping away mistakes so I'm just gonna tape right there and then I don't have to worry about how big my swirls are I can just go now with these kind of stencils here see how they're a little bit flexible you can just hold your hand down on them if you want to put pressure or if you just don't apply a lot of pressure behind your brush they don't move too much at all either that way I also like to continue to fold over my paper towels. That way I can see what I'm getting off my brush rather than just guessing. Because if you can see here, it gets like really messy and you can't see what you're painting. So if you want, just flip it over and pull that way and then you can see what you're doing again. So now I'm back to the lines in my final corner here and um, instead of holding down, I'm gonna show you how to stipple because lines are always a really good spot to use stippling. So you're just gonna bounce your brush. I'm not throwing it into the board, I'm just bouncing it off the bottom. Just nice slight hand. I'm not even gripping my brush very hard. That keeps me from pressing in too much. Now that we've completed the first layer, let's go ahead and take a peek. I'm just gonna peel up my tape. And okay, this looks pretty good. So if you like that really dusty, rustic look, you could just leave it here at one layer. If you're wanting something more bold or something you might want to sand down at the end, you can go ahead and just lay your stencil back down and go at it for another coat. I think I'm going to go ahead and do another coat because I want my letters for this project to be really bold. And that's a great thing too about mylar stencils opposed to a vinyl. With a vinyl stencil, it's a one stick and you're done. Or you have to reprint a whole new one and lining up all the letters, that's really tricky. So the mylar right here, if you notice, it just flopped right back down in place. 
Um, unless maybe you wanted to do something like a drop shadow, which if you tune into some of our other videos, I can give you a little bit more information about that. Um, but that's what these Mylar stencils are really great for. Also, maybe you're going to do a bunch of projects for some family members or some friends this Christmas. So this Mylar stencil here is also washable and reusable. So you don't have to worry about your paint getting caked on and kind of turning your other projects different colors just because of blending. So the next step in this project is I'm going to add some dry brushing along my edges. Sometimes people call it antiquing, but it's essentially just anything to anchor your board and make it look more finished. So I'm going to use the same thing, my dome brush, and for this one I'm going to use the same paint color here, and I'm just whoops, going to rub it off on my plate so I don't have a ton of excess. I'm just going to start by adding some heavy spots here and there. Um, I usually start at least with all four corners and then I add some just kind of along the way. If you go the opposite direction of the grain on your board, it's going to trick your eye. So what you want to do is just go visually along with the lines you already created in the background. Let's go ahead and I want to put one here. Sometimes too, if you're doing it kind of heavy, you can sneak in on the board just a little bit more. Um, and then you're just going to run this along. So with the antiquing, what you're kind of trying to achieve is just making your board look a little bit more rustic or charmed, um, at least with this project I am. So that's why I'm kind of going a little heavier. I'm kind of going into my board, less about anchoring and framing and more about making it look a little old, a little charming. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to load my brush um, quite a bit heavier than I would load it for stenciling. I'm just going to wipe it off on my paper plate instead of the towel so that it's not absorbing so much paint, just like coating the whole dome brush. I'm going to go here and I'm just pulling in lightly and so that's kind of that first step. Just using our fingers to create this sweeping motion with the brush. I'm just kind of pushing down my middle finger quickly instead of flicking my wrist. This is going to give you a quicker motion without pressure on your board. And so see how this side versus this side now has that nice charming dusty antique look and this half versus this half. You can see that there has that really nice finished look. So I'm getting to a spot where I kind of think I'm, I'm getting where I like it, but just to kind of check, when you're so close in on something, it can be really hard to tell. So if you just squint your eyes, you know, it looks really funny, but if you just squint your eyes really hard at your board here, you can kind of see, and I, I, as soon as I did that, I could kind of see that I don't like three places. So um, they're a little too heavy visually. So I'm just gonna take my sanding block I'm just going to run it over all the places that I saw that I didn't like. There we go. Now we're going to go on to my favorite technique, splatter. So what you're going to need for that is you're going to need a rake brush. And I usually use the back end of a dome brush or any brush really that has a good handle will be nice to anchor, okay? So you're going to get your two tools and then you're going to take whatever color paint you want. For this one, again, I'm just going to use the same cream color I've been using this whole time. I think it's going to help tone down the red. I think the red's a little bit stark for me. And then you're just going to add water to it. Good watered down paint is great for splattering. I'm just going to use the end of my rake brush to kind of stir until we get like a milky consistency. So I think what I have done is added more water than I have added paint. And I'm going to scoot this back so I don't accidentally splash some onto my board that I don't want. I'm going to have to add just a little bit more paint to that. And again, just mixing it in. So different paint consistency is going to give you different spatter marks. So if you're wanting really big blobby splatters, which is usually what I like, um, I'm going to use more of a watered down paint. The drier your paint, um, the, th the tinier your spatters are going to be. So I can actually just show you that right here and then you can kind of decide what you're looking for with your project. So we're going to add just a little bit of water to this section here. So that one's pretty dry. I'm going to come into this. Always test your spatter off on your plate before you go to your project. Um, that's just good habits because sometimes you don't know what's going to come off the brush with that first spatter. So again, this is the drier paint. This isn't very much water added. Teeny tiny little spatter marks, if you can see that. Um, now, if you're looking for what I typically like, which is that really big spatter, 
you're going to use this really watery paint here. So if you can just see the difference there. And usually a combination of the two will really finish out your project nicely because um, those big spatters can really help anchor and those little ones can just dust lightly over the whole thing. Now that I've demonstrated the two spattering techniques on the table, I'm ready to go to my board. I'm going to use the thin waterier paint to kind of anchor around in my corners because those are going to give me again those really big drops. And if you see here, I'm just kind of dropping my brush. I'm not whacking it because it's going to give you more backflow and all your paint's going to go behind you or on you. So what you want to do is just kind of drop your brush here. So I think I want it a little heavier over this corner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this brush and I'm going to anchor it right here in this corner and I'm just going to be sure I'm using my control. And as I want to move the brush, so you can see there how that kind of gave me more of a curved look and really nice and thick spatters. Go ahead and do this corner here as well. And I'm gonna do these bigger drops along my bottom and my top too, just like across, just like we did the antiquing. So I'm just kind of following that same line pattern and it's gonna give me the same thing. It's just anchoring my edges making it look nice and antique. Now I want something across the middle here. So I didn't mix up very much of that thick paint because I shouldn't need a lot of it. But I'm going to use the thicker spottering paint across my middle because I want those really small so they don't overpower my words. And I'm going to, oop, those are a little big. I'm going to hold back kind of far. So I want them to just be kind of few and far between. And I'm gonna maybe moving like this is a little bit better for me. I think that's working better today. So kind of just adjusting my height seems to be giving me the variation that I want for this project. There we go. I think that's perfect. All right, yeah, okay. So I'm beginning to really like where this project is. Um, but now that I've spattered, you kind of have to leave it alone because spattering does take forever to dry. Typically, I leave something like this um, overnight before I do anything with it again. That just gives me the safety, making sure I'm not running my hand across a splatter mark and, and messing the whole thing up because um, it's really hard to patch spatter. So um, what I'll do is I'll just call this project. I think it looks great. Um, and I'll just set it overnight until I'm ready to hang it in my home. To speed up the process of drying, I went ahead and used a blow dryer. And so now to finish this project, what I'm going to do is either use a wax to seal, or if you're wanting this outside or somewhere that you need it weather resistant, you can just use a polyurethane. I'm really loving how this project turned out. I can't wait to hang it in my home. And here at Studio R12, we're here to help your project work in your home. So our stencils come in lots of sizes. We've got the medium here that you could use as like um, a mantle piece or just to decorate and really an accent your home. Or we have something small like this that you could use as a door hanger or even hang on your Christmas tree. Or we've got something as large as this one here behind me, which is a nice statement piece you can use to decorate all around. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future projects, pro tips and tricks, and more from Studio R12. Thanks for watching. Happy crafting.